If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 167 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with an away game in Europe against Terek Grozny, the Russian side. Obviously we were able to beat them in the opening game of the, uh, of the competition, but since then we've lost to Rapid Vienna and drawn 4-4 with Braga. So we're hoping for a better result here against the Russians uh, this time around. Fingers crossed we can score some goals as well and hopefully keep a clean sheet as well to ensure that we can uh, boost ourselves up towards the, uh, the top of the group again. Obviously, uh, the top two, Braga and uh, Rapid Vienna, will play each other again uh, in this episode. They were beaten perhaps I think Rapid Vienna beat Braga didn't they in the opening day and we beat Grozny and then we were both top of the table and then we subsequently lost to the Austrian side so uh, we could do with a win here against Terry Grozny to keep up to uh, up to speed with everybody else in the group but they started off on the front foot here in the 20th minute as you can see just I was effectively just trying not to put a foot in so that I inadvertently gave away a dodgy penalty so I'm just trying to hound them and kind of force them backwards whilst trying to you know not tackle them necessarily wait for them to make a mistake because uh, you know what the game's like Every now and again, you, it will make you put in a dodgy foot and you'll give away a pano. In the end, they just scored anyway by uh, just passing it around me and then firing it into the bottom corner. It was actually a very impressive finish to whip it round the, the, uh, the, into the post and uh, into the back of the net off the woodwork. But we were able to get ourselves back on level terms not long after as Biragi, of all people, the left back that we brought in this year from Kievo, comes up trumps my furthest forward player in that particular move and a decent finish as well good power behind it he does have pace like acceleration and sprint speed of 95 plus though so uh, that really came in handy uh, as did the pace of Yusuf Paulson in this particular move racing away here thought about squaring it across to uh, Strail Georgiev but decided you know what Paulson has been such a good striker for me I think we can deal with the situation at hand and we did we made it 3-1 there but on the hour mark we got caught I was trying to catch him on the counter attack again there as you can see and uh, they caught me in possession and then tried to catch me on the counter and go up the other end lovely ball over the top and I'm so disappointed in my goalkeeper there that he wasn't able to keep that out so much power on the shot though so I guess I could perhaps let him off slightly but still a very well struck shot and the keeper couldn't keep it out too much behind it for him tried his best to palm it over the top but Graham Norton wrists and he couldn't do anything with it, it went into the back of the net so that made it 2-2 and then we were trying to get back in front again for a third time lovely ball over the top brought it down brilliantly there Johannes guys and if the bring down was good enough then the finish was even better great first time shot as it drops down off his chest, wonderful technique to fire it into the top right-hand corner. We have the lead again, but here they come up the other end with 10 minutes to go, and they equalise again. So 3-3 three, three in the 82nd minute, and that was how it was going to finish. So in the past couple of episodes, we've had two games in Europe. We've scored seven, and we've conceded seven as well. So a uh, three-all draw away from home against Terek Grozny means that we're probably going to have to beat Rapid Vienna and Braga to stand a chance of uh, going through in the uh, in place of either of them in the knockout stages of the uh, Europa League so if we've got it all to do in Europe but presently in uh, domestically in the Barclays Premier League we're having a very very good season we sat top of the league uh, as we sit right now uh, unfortunately it uh, didn't show the league table in the opening uh, opening cut scenes for either this game or the next game so I can't show you the table until the very end of the uh, of the episode so uh, at present we are top though I can definitely tell you that and as always after the game against uh, someone in Europe the following weekend uh, after the Thursday is always a rotated side whether it be this side that plays against the side in Europe and then the side that plays in Europe that plays at the weekend or vice versa as is the case today and uh, we were actually starting a uh, pretty so well to be fair our squad is pretty good this year we've done really well in not only just improving the first team but over like last year we just solidly improved the first team and then this year we've improved on the players that we improved with last year but then those players that were here last year have been dropped back down to the reserve side so that we actually have just a very good squad now which is very nice to have actually it's the first time in this entire series that we've had a genuinely impressive first team and reserve side that uh, you know both with both teams being quite comfortable in getting results in any competition so uh, we're really enjoying or I'm really enjoying putting this series together right now for this uh, seventh season hopefully you guys are enjoying watching it unfortunately though after we took our 1-0 lead we uh, were going to get caught with a penalty I wasn't too sure what for we were able to clear it off the line 
but to, to stop it from going in after the dink shot, as you can see here, it was actually Ivaz on the line, but the keeper took out Martin Braithwaite as he was diving to try and save it. I'm not really too sure whether that's a penalty or not, to be completely honest. He was just diving to try and save his shot, and Braithwaite was just wrong place, wrong time. It wasn't really a foul, but he did save the penalty anyway, so Marcus Hutchinson makes up for the error. Uh, obviously made an error in the previous game that cost us a goal that obviously cost us two points, but hopefully in this one, that to particular save for the time being may have gotten us two points because obviously that would have drawn us or drawn them level and they're going to have another chance here to hit the inside of the post and then Fabian Snakey Delph who's uh, recently uh, decided that he does want to leave Aston Villa in real life and go to Manchester City for a lot of money uh, so uh, I'm not too sure what, well I'm pretty sure actually Villa fans uh, what their opinion will be on that particular move but we'll uh, avoid <laughs> souring Fabian Delph's name any more than uh, has been done previously on social media over the past few days and then we got a penalty at the other end as the second half progressed just before the hour mark Leandro Bakuna brought down my striker and I'm actually going to give it to Callum Wilson to, uh, to take the penalty I don't think he was the one that won it but uh, he does have the best penalty stats of everybody in the starting lineup in this particular team and he buries it in the top right hand corner went the same way as Aston Villa but this time the goalkeeper stayed rooted to his spot they've actually got Zoot in goal the guy from PSV so uh, I didn't actually enjoy him too much when I was streaming with PSV or PSV but uh, Zoot always seems to play quite well against me so uh, it was nice to actually get a couple of goals past him here they did get one back through Gabby Agbonlahor he's just fucking rapid I couldn't catch him to be completely honest so so fast and actually a decent finish which is like Gabby used to do in real life at the beginning of his career but then he never really fulfilled his potential and just kind of dropped away and he's in he's in his late 20s early 30s now isn't he Gabby I think still very very fast but not as prolific a striker as his uh, young potential uh, threatened to be we are going to make it 3-1 though Ivas with a brilliant draw ball across to Quezzi Appia to make it 3-1 in the 81st minutes we have our two goal advantage back and then with just three or four minutes to go we're coming down the left hand side again Wendell with uh, the cross or Wendell uh, to, uh, to try and get it into the box gets blocked but then Callum Wilson receives it in the box turns inside the man tries the shot it gets blocked again but Adarabi Oyo is there to, uh, to tuck it home underneath the goalkeeper to give it a quite comfortable scoreline of four goals to one not necessarily fully deserved 4-1 scoreline a couple of the goals were quite uh, generous in how they presented themselves especially that last one but we'll take them we will definitely take them and that's a 4-1 win and three points towards our Barclays uh, Premier League I guess this season the way this season has started title challenge but obviously it's a top four challenge is the main priority uh, the second game or third game in the episode second Barclays Premier League game in the episode is away from home against Norwich now, we played them recently in the Chelsea career mode and as we mentioned then they have been a bit of a bogey team for me just this year in general on FIFA 15 especially in the Liverpool series they're starting a 4-1 2-1-2 with Gary Hooper and Ricky Van Vorsenkel up top. Uh, both of those players will probably be in their early 30s by the time now we're in this seventh season. So I'm not sure how uh, what, what the stats will look like, whether they've grown much or whether they stayed about the same and then they've started to deteriorate towards the end of their careers. But uh, we'll try and do our best. Obviously, we've got the stronger lineup in this one again. Uh, Johannes Geis and Julian von Haak back into the middle trying to get some more growth out of Johannes Geis this season he did grow slightly last year but I would like a little bit more growth out of him if possible uh, this year obviously Julian von Haak alongside him has grown loads this year up two ratings already and we will have a squad report in tomorrow's episode obviously on Monday but for now we're pushing forward we're one nil up as we head into the second half Alvaro Vidio is extremely quick racing away down this right hand side smashes it across but as he drills the cross into the box you can see him go down and he is writhing around in so much pain there and uh, we'll find out at the end of the video what that injury was but it looked extremely painful I wasn't sure what it was I thought perhaps it was his knee because he looked as if he was holding his knee or his upper his upper leg so I wasn't sure and we'll find like I say we'll find out at the end of the episode what that particular injury is but they're going to catch me on the counter-attack you know as we were coming down the right hand side they're now coming down that same side of the pitch down our right their left Ricky van Wolfswinkel coming down the uh, the channel nice little ball roll then feeds it into Johnny Housen who very naughtily squares it across to his teammate to make it 1-1 in the 64th minute I was a bit perturbed by that a bit put off but uh, we were trying to uh, pick ourselves up and go again down the left hand side this time through Timo Werner trying not to give the ball away this time and get caught on the counter attack Stral Georgiev is going to uh, go down the line and then back in towards Von Hart kind of dupe the defender then we've got a man free on this far side and it's Adarabioyo the man that came on for the injured Alvaro Vidio so at least he had an impact off the bench putting us 2-1 up again that was literally three minutes after Norwich had pulled themselves back level but 
But as you can tell by the clock, it's only three or four minutes after we've gone in front again that they're going to get their next chance. Really nicely worked down the right-hand side. Uh, Marvin Olsen, or Martin Olsen, sorry, squares it across. And then again, they square it across the box and rifle it in at the back post to make it 2-2. So we only get a point from that game against Norwich. I don't know how I feel about that result. I would have liked to win, obviously, especially after being 1-0 and then subsequently 2-1 up. But... They were very effective in the way that they scored their goals, so fair play to them. But it was a torn quadricep that uh, Alvaro Vidia went down with, which, understandably, pretty fucking painful, to be completely honest. He's going to be out for three months, unfortunately. So uh, we are close-ish to January now. We're in the end of... Uh, or middle of November now, I think. So we're not too far away from January, so we might be able to bring in uh, a player in that month to perhaps cover for uh, for him for the final month and a half of his in of that particular injury although hopefully he can come back sooner rather than later and we'll be all right but we are still top of the table by three points as you can see from Chelsea Newcastle have played their game in hand although they've only drawn it so uh, the gap to them is now five points as opposed to the three it was previously we of course picked up a win and a draw today so uh, we're doing okay doing very well in the league right now I'm pretty pleased with how this season's going domestically uh, in the league but I really would like to get through in Europe as well if we possibly can although to be fair if we're going to have injuries like the one to Alvaro Fadillo perhaps not having so many fixtures may actually be a, a blessing in disguise and if we can I may I won't I obviously won't throw the opportunity to go out of the Euro Europa League group stage and into the knockouts but if we do go out then uh, it may help us push towards Champions League qualification for next season but we'll see how it goes we'll take it as it comes and obviously we'll uh, gauge the situation by the time we get to the January transfer window so that's all for now thank you very much for watching guys as always drop the video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days whether it be this series the My Player series that went up earlier on this afternoon or of course the uh, career mode road to glory no this is career mode to glory uh, <laughs> the Chelsea career mode that went up on Friday or of course the youth squad challenge that went up on Friday with MGH and Chani Sports and of course there'll be another episode of that for you tomorrow as well but for now thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time